So we are going to be talking about uh, risk management and the psychology of trading. Risk management is, it is, it is a very, very varied subject and topic. On Quora.com, I'm uh, one of their most viewed writers uh, in a lot of the trading categories, uh, technical analysis, market psychology, and um, uh, cryptocurrencies, forex, all that jazz. Anything pretty much trading. And, and I bet most of the questions I get fielded are related to, <clears throat> um, in some way or another, about risk management and how does how do you uh, – manage risk and i i personally and honestly feel like it is almost impossible to really manage risk until you understand yourself trading is really not about technical analysis all right technical analysis is pretty easy all right it, it, it doesn't take a very intelligent person to to use technical analysis what is difficult is being able to stomach losses, being able to react appropriately and not let fear and excitement cloud your judgment. Trading is really the antithesis of human behavior because to make money trading, you have to take something that is very important, your own money, and then put it at risk. To make more of it. The problem with that is that it goes counter to every single thing that we have been taught from a young age and it goes counter to every single thing that we uh, unconsciously um, develop to defend against. Think of putting your hand on a hot stove. You don't really need to know after the first time how bad your hand hurt from heat that uh, you don't put your hand on a hot stove or a hot surface. In fact, that one incident dealing with heat and pain, that is generally enough to uh, make sure that you don't do that ever again. Trading is a little different. Trading will manifest all of the issues that you have inside yourself. It ta trading targets or insecurities, Trading targets your hopes and destroys them. Trading targets your fears and makes you makes you terrified. Very rarely does anything in trading involve feeling good for any certain amount of time. <laughs> Risk management is something that really can only happen if you know what you are doing mentally, you have to be aware of how you are thinking and what you are thinking about, all right? If you know, for example, actually, I'll use this example right now. I trade my own account. I trade private accounts. I trade a, uh, I direct a cryptocurrency, a private equity funds account for cryptocurrencies. Um, but I'll tell you something that happened to me yesterday. This was on the pound dollar. I had gone short in the pound dollar, probably at 42.76, five lots short. And all it did was run up against me. That didn't really bother me, but um, I also had put that same trade in for a client. And it really bothered him. It really bothered him when he saw it lose a lot. I mean, five pips is 50 bucks a pip. I mean, five lots is 50 bucks a pip. And when we went to uh, over overnight, he got really panicky because he was down, um, I don't know, three grand or so. And I actually added to the short because I've been operating off this trade idea. I showed this earlier this morning. I uh, published this over the weekend on taking a short on the, the pound dollar. And where I shorted, it, it went against me quite a bit. Um, almost 100 pips or so it went against me. But then I added to it again. And 
the thing is, is that he was freaked out and this is what he did. He took himself out of the position. All right. He talked into his account and then he took the loss. And then when I said, uh, uh, well, he, yeah, he exited that position. Then he exited the one I added to. Um, and he was really mad and not as mad as I was. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I don't know if any of you guys have managed people's private accounts before, but I, I, there's a reason that people seek out folks to to trade their accounts. It's because they can't uh, they can't handle the the pain of the market. It's it's hurt them before, so they they understand that there are significant significant gains to be had in the market, but they they don't have the um, emotional discipline to stay in a trade when when they've already determined that they know where it's going to go. So the problem for him was that he exited his trade early. This is, happens to a lot of people. This happened to me when I first started trading. Like if I took a short, like if I knew that this is a zone to be shorting the pound dollar and I entered in at, <clears throat> at 42, uh, 72, 42, 72. And price fell down, went back up against me. And I would say, well, you know, this is probably a triple top. But then it just keeps going against me. And generally, and this is where he exited, he exited right near probably where he shouldn't have exited. All right. There, the market will always move in the direction that will cause the most amount of pain to the most amount of people. And he took the loss on his account and he was really upset that I didn't leave the positions in um, my own account or in uh, some of the other clients accounts Well, because they'd been with me for long enough to know not to just log into their accounts. I reminded him, his name's Ben. We'll say his name is Ben. I reminded him that he sought somebody to trade on his behalf. And the reason he wants somebody to trade on his behalf is the exact reason why he lost money on that trade because he could not handle a hundred pip loss. He could not, he could not, not handle, not as far as his account balance, he couldn't handle it emotionally. He couldn't handle it uh, uh, in his mind. He got, as price inched higher and higher, he got, more and more afraid and that compounded on top of each other and it just it just got worse and then he finally capitulated the longer you trade the more you the thing is is the market's either going to kick you out or you're just going to stick with it um there, there there are a lot of things that you can do to adapt to to trading markets there's a lot of things that you can do to get used to trading markets but really i mean it's it's hard to really understand what a market is doing to you until you are actively in it. I want to show you, this is an answer on Quora. I, I did last night or Sunday rather. It was what techniques do you use to get into the right mindset before trading? And I said, this is the, I don't even know how to pronounce it, so I apologize. This is the La, La Manali highway in India, there is no guardrail here. <laughs> this is the Trostigen highway in Norway. There is no uh, guardrail there. And then I wrote, I'm scared to death of heights. I hate heights. I have a hard time getting on my ladder in my house to um, like, you know, if I need to check the shingles on my house or if I like we painted my house last year, my wife and I, and uh, I hate heights and I hate them because I chalk it up to where I live. I live in the Great Plains of the Midwest in the United States, specifically South Dakota on the eastern side of the state, which looks like looks like this. These pictures here. It is a flat bear. It is a flat land of, of nothing, <laughs> just corn, beans, cows, hogs, just just every agriculture as far as the eye can see. The next town is 30 minute drive from where I live. 
There's nothing, this is all that looks like between me and the next town. And so the Great Plains is, it's where I live is sometimes called the Sea of Grass. It's flat. As far as the eye can see, it's flat. There's the occasional hill and some topography changes if you are near a major river or lake, but otherwise it's flat. Here's where the buffalo uh, used to roar across the prairies and when there were herds of tens of thousands, they shook the earth for miles. And you can go to, a, 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 a on the western side of the state, you can go to Custer State Park where they do the buffalo roundup and you can get kind of an idea. And this is where the Native American Lakota Sioux, they could see, feel, and follow the herds for miles. And uh, my point was that, that I'm, I'm getting to my point is that my fear of heights is probably, for good reason, a result of the region of where I live. I don't have to worry about any mountains or hills. The people who live here, like in India or where this road is in Norway, I don't know if they get scared to death. I I would though. I I get woozy even just looking at this. This is this scares the crap out of me. I I could not deal with this. <laughs> I'm frightened to death at heights. But that is something people who who live there, who are born there, who have lived there for a while, they're probably not freaking out like I would. They're used to it. They're accustomed to it. Trading is the same way. There are a whole bunch of books that you could read about how to address your emotions, your psychology, and your response to fear. But I really believe that the only way that you can get into the right mindset and the required attitude is to lose money and lose it often. Lose, <laughs> lose so much that, that you are hurt and in pain and, and uh, like that you have to yell or punch something and lose so much and so often that you wake up at night anxious you know, that is the environment of trading. It is not a, a easy thing to do. And if you survive that experience, you get used to it. You begin to adapt to that environment of trading, whether consciously or subconsciously, you will get used to the sheer terror and awful experience that trading really is. And I don't say that to, to scare folks. I don't, I don't mean to like frighten you. But the point, I'm being very real about this because anybody who signs up for a service like this or reads a book on trading, they're not doing it because they're already successful at trading. They're doing it because they want to know how to become successful at trading. And joining a service like this is important to furthering your success, but so is the actual trading. I may diverge a little bit from the opinions of some trading educators, but I do not believe that demo accounts are going to help you. I think they are going to hurt you. Demo accounts are fine for learning about technical analysis and how to, you know, understand the aesthetics of a chart or how to trade, you know, just the basics for, for that. But there is no substitute in the market for the emotional roller coaster that trading really is with your, you know, when you're doing it with, with your own money. You may have the most beautiful setup in the world. And you may have 100% probability that price is going to go in the direction that you wanted it to. But if you can't tolerate a paper loss or a paper drawdown, if you can't if you can't wait for it to get into position, for it to turn into profit, if you are afraid of what's happening with your money while you're trading, you're not going to last. You will never last. You'll just you'll just end up losing money. Part something that you could do that is really easy is to really assume that the money assume that the money you are risking is already gone if you're taking like a tenth of a lot and you're willing to risk 50 pips. 
take that 50 pips off your balance. If you already, if you have resolved to believe and, 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 uh, and understand that the money that you've put to risk is already gone, then you can't be afraid of it going against you because you've already determined that that's going to happen. There is not a single trade I take where I don't actually believe that it's going to go against me. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't think like that much anymore. I just, <clears throat> I've been doing it for a while. So I, I've gotten successful and I've gone through horrible, you know, p personal pain and suffering and trials to become successful at trading. But you, you, uh, you can't expect to, to not be afraid of your money if you uh, if you haven't thought that it could go away. So for me, the easiest way to learn how to deal with losing money is assume that it's gone already. It's dangerous to put on a trade and think, oh man, I could make 100 pips from this trade. And you say to yourself, and if, you know, if it goes against me, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll leave it. That's, that's horrible. <laughs> People who don't have a predetermined stop, at least mentally, are are they they are very determined to lose a lot of money. <clears throat> so it's very important, and that's probably going to address your risk management the most. Is assume, oh that there's my English. Assume that the money, <coughs> excuse me, I've had this cough for a while. Assume that the money you are risking is already gone. And, and honestly, if you do that, there is not a, a trade in the world that you have to be afraid of because you already know what your stop is and you already know how much money you're going to lose. We don't know a lot of things in the market. Okay, we don't. But there's, there's, there's very little. Actually, I should say, but you. We know very little about what happens in the market, but each one of us, you get to choose how much money you will lose. If you leave it up to the market, it will take all of it. Okay, it will it will fleece you. Probably the most important thing to understand about trading is that the money you lose is because you choose chose to let it happen. If you move your stop because you're hoping price will return into profit, or if you move your stop because it's already lost so much and you just you just can't stomach the thought of, of taking it, then whose fault is it that the money got lost? It's not the market maker, it's not the the shadow council of they manipulating the market. There is nobody to blame for the loss of money in the market except for the individual trader. Sure, there are probably freak occurrences where the broker uh, didn't get your stop loss or, or something, but I've never heard of an account being blown because of, uh, of that. I've, I've always heard of accounts being blown because people didn't know how much they were going to risk, didn't know where they were going to risk it, and they, they moved their stops. They hoped price would return to somewhere or they added to losing positions. <clears throat> you get to choose how much money you are going to lose in the market. 
That is all under your control. And you know what? That is the most powerful thing under your control. You can't figure out how much you're going to win. You know, that's, that's very, that's very hard to do. Probably what is easiest, I'm just sitting down. I use a standing desk and I just move my chair so now I'm sitting in it. <clears throat> but you will get to have the opportunity to decide how much you're going to lose. And then that falls into risk management. And risk management is a very, very broad topic concerning, you know, your general account balance. How are you, how are you, where, where are your trade entries? What is your risk to reward? Um, you know, personally, I don't, um, it's, uh, let's see. I don't have a predetermined profit target myself. I, I don't, I have a, um, like I, 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 I forecast on the long term. Um, for instance, in, um, I already have that there. <clears throat> Where are we at? Uh, did I not? Do the forecast there. I thought I put that up there. Maybe it didn't. Well, give me a second. Pull it up. This is another answer I did in Cora. Actually, no. I'll share this real quick, but uh, I, I do my own forecasting, and so I, I this is this is for Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in general. Um, you know, a forecast of uh, uh, where the next reversal zone is going to happen, and so I have it pointing to June, late June of 2018 is where the next bear move in cryptocurrencies will happen. And you know, without going through a whole bunch of this stuff here, but uh, um, oh, where are we at? Here it is. Date of the new major swing high signaling the next corrective wave is around June 20th, 2018. And the highest target price in that swing up is going to be 30731 But the most important component is not the price range. It is identifying a date range. Okay, so in my long-term analysis, I know that I can reduce my risk very easily by having a long-term bias. For example, long-term bias for the pound dollar right now is to have a pretty significant corrective move down. So right away over the next couple weeks, I'm not going to be entertaining any long positions in in the pound dollar. All right. I'm, I'm really not going to be looking to go long because a weekly forecast or weekly charts, those determine my intraday trading. Okay. That was, that was, Gan talked about that a lot. He said that uh, uh, weekly charts should influence your intraday trading. So if we're looking at a weekly chart, And we know we're very top heavy looking at all that other analysis and we're very extended and we, we discussed this morning the reasons why I'm short. My bias is short over the next long term here. You know, I guess that depends, you know, long term would be a couple months for me, but um, that's kind of the area I'm shooting for. But uh, 
if my bias is to go short because I I have projected, you know, my my own analysis says that this is going to go lower, then I can eliminate 50% of the wrong direction trades already. You know, I can I can eliminate the oopses in my trades. So I can avoid going long. And then it makes it a whole lot easier for me to to say like I, I write in my trade journal, I say, uh, all right, short bias for the next two weeks and then double check that bias after two weeks or at a certain price range or date. And so already I get to I get to eliminate a lot of the risk of making the bad trades. As far as risk management concerning your entries, your entries can Uh, one second. <clears throat> oh, okay. Um, the entries should be pretty, uh, you know, at spot on as you can so that your actual risk in the trade is, is reduced. For instance, on the hourly, and this is a pretty, we should have a little pullback here at some point, but on the hourly, I know that we're trending down <coughs> and that we found, um, you know, so some support here. Now, as far as where's where's my risk going to be, I can just really use Fibonacci's from the last swings. And I know that if price goes lower, it'll want to retest this 42.62 before we have the next actual significant bounce probably. And so, you know, really where we're at is, is a fairly safe entry zone to possibly add to a short. Maybe if we get up to 40, one forty three oh five, and then where's my risk? Well, it's it's very little actually. Probably one forty three twenty four, and my profit because I have such a long bias for a down move towards the one thirty seven one thirty five area. I can really let that runner run for a while. My shorts up here. And well, the, and the early ones down here and up here, they're fine. I'll just let them let them go. But risk management, we're going to talk a lot about risk management and um, the various methods to do that. But the best risk method and risk management that is going to help any trader is to learn more about how you respond to losing trades. Because when you get into a losing trade and you begin to feel fear and anxiety, all of your reasoning goes out the window. You start to act like somebody who's in a crisis. And no amount of risk management is going to protect you from you. You just can't. I mean, it's just how it's how our minds work. My, my wife is a psychologist. She's a PsyD, uh, not a PhD. She's a PsyD. So she's a legitimate Yoda mind reader. I don't even know if I know what I'm doing sometimes because I think she might be controlling me. <laughs> it's a joke. But... Um, I know that just from talking with her about trading psychology stuff is that when we get into a crisis, it's not just our body and a physiological response, it's a psychological response. And unfortunately, well, fortunately and unfortunately, that we know that that kind of response has helped us in the past whether we're aware of it or not, we know that that kind of response in a crisis has helped us and kept us safe and avoided danger and harm, or it's helped yourself or somebody else. In trading though, 
it can really ruin you. Because what is the natural reaction to something that is hurting you? It is either to get away from it or to eliminate the thing that is hurting. And when you have a trade active and it's going against you and you can't stand it, you have really those two options. You can either exit the trade or you can choose to ignore it and hope that it goes away and it won't. And no matter how many risk management books and seminars and sessions you've taken, when you are in a crisis, when you are experiencing real fear and anxiety, if you don't know that you are in that kind of a moment, nothing that you learn is going to save you. Really, it's risk management to a trader who is not aware of their own psychological and emotional response to, to trading. Risk management to that kind of a trader, it makes about as much sense as giving a three-year-old the car keys. Learning about risk management is, is extremely important and effective, and it's, it's one of the main tenets of trading, but it is utterly worthless unless you are very, very aware of yourself. And so what you can do, what you can do is keep a record. Use a, use a uh, I don't know, a goal book or a journal or a Word document or write, actually writing by hand is more effective. You 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 re, you recall things and are able to to uh, um, retain information better when you write it by hand. My trade journals are done by hand. I don't I don't type them out. I do some part of my trade journal I should say on the computer. I uh, um, chart like the trade entries and stuff, but. As far as the journal component where I, I do write down how I was feeling during the trades, what were my thoughts, or if I'm in the middle of a trade and I notice I start to get anxious, because that never goes away. You always get anxious when, you have a, when you're trading. You always, you always get concerned if, some, if, if something's moving against you. You know, it's, it's my money. Of course I'm going to be worried about it. I'd be lying to say I don't get upset if, or, or worried or have those same feelings come up. But the difference is, is I'm aware of it. I can I, I I can stop myself and and say okay I am in a spot right now where I could be compromising my trading because why take my trade journal out and I write down what I'm feeling what I'm thinking and that is enough for me now to to uh, you know, make the right decisions in my trading. <clears throat> I am looking for I'm trying to find a uh... I don't want to share these people's names, but I'll, I'll I, I get I get private messages quite a bit from folks on Cora, and I'll read one if I can find it. Um, Okay, here's one. Um, we'll call him Blake. He says, greetings. My name is Blake. I really like your post about your experience day trading. Thank you for your honest words. I can relate to it. It starts out fun and games, but can turn south quick. I'd like to know more about your experiences and what you have found that actually works. More so, I'm looking for a mentor. 
please, I have lost lots of money and I would like some guidance. And then he gave me his email and uh, yeah, it's rough. Um, this one is a guy, um, call him Pete. It's a very short one. It says, thank you. I have cried while reading your post. I sincerely thank you for telling your story and giving me hope and understanding. And I believe that was on a post I did on um, my journey to <clears throat> profitability. Um, I've gotten some pretty sad um, private messages from folks and some of them are really heartbreaking because I, I know what they're going through. And it honestly does break my heart sometimes because <clears throat> I know for some people, they really have probably, they are, they have lost or they are at risk of losing a good portion of their money and or income. And that's a very terrifying thing for an individual to go through. What kind of fear and suffering do you have to go through to message somebody randomly on the internet who you, you, who you don't know and ask them for help with your trading? Because it happens a lot. I'm shocked. I've, I, I, I've been shocked over the years how often this this happens and it, it, I mean it really kind of seems like it, it follows that statistic that you know a large percentage of people who try trading fail but there is a consistent and a constant variable in all of these messages they all mention they are afraid Fear is inevitable. Fear is constant. And you should expect it. That is why I, I, I'm going to, my, one of my brothers is a fireman. And he has to see some pretty awful things. Um, you know, children who have been burned and, and, and you know, and, and people in horrible car accidents. Um, he just told me a very sad incident that happened. Um, actually, I'm not supposed to talk about that one. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's actually not funny. It's, uh, it's pretty sad, but he has to go, he has to witness some very traumatic things. You know, that, that's his job. Now, I'm not saying trading is anywhere near that kind of profession. But trading is similar in that your job as a trader is to be in crisis a good majority of the time. I'm going to keep preaching about that because There's too many people who think that just because trading is so accessible, that it's easy to get into, that it's easy to, to open an account with, and that it's, that it's easy st to start doing pretty immediately, that does not equate to easy to master. It's, it's I don't know what the equivalent of it is in, in uh, in Europe, but somebody who's brand new at trading, thinking that they're going to open an account and become successful at it right away, is about makes about as much sense as me walking onto the, uh, the the spring training of the New York Yankees and thinking that I'm going to be just as good as them because I can buy a baseball bat and a baseball glove. Doesn't work like that. <laughs> 
it's it's easy to get into baseball. It's it's easy to get into to uh, not soccer, football. <laughs> it's easy to get into football. But just there's uh there's practice fields all over the place, even here in the states. I can go to Walmart and get a soccer ball, and uh, but, uh, but just because it's easy to get into, doesn't mean that I'm even ready to do anything related to to being good at that sport. The same goes for trading. Honestly, and I've I've, I've said this to people before. If you really, 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 really want to get into trading, find a therapist. I'm, and I'm dead serious. The more you know about what makes you tick and how you respond to crisis, fear, anxiety, and worry, the more you know about that, you are going to be light years ahead of any other trader. You can probably shave off four years of of get of trading experience. Easy. Find yourself a very good psychodynamic psychologist like my wife. Somebody that is going to help you understand about you. <clears throat> And when, when you know about this, this sounds so, I'm, I, I mean, this sounds so cheesy or redundant, but the more you know about you, the better you'll be. That, that is essentially the truth, though. Because you're never going to be able to get away with being afraid. That's not the point. The point is to become aware of that fear and then let it happen. If I know I'm freaking out because I've got a bad trade, well, I mean, I would have left it. <laughs> but if I could tell myself when I first started trading that I lost so much possible money because I exited a trade early and then tried to get back in, and then and then I kept chasing and it didn't work, even though my analysis was good, I didn't have the... I didn't have the trading psychology and experience to, to, to continue the hold. But if I could tell my old self, hey, let it happen. Just tell yourself, listen, I know I am freaking out right now, and that's cool. I can't do anything about it. So I'm just going to let it happen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to absorb it. I'm, I'm just going to let myself freak out. And, and worry about it. I'm not going to try and repress it. I'm just going to give that little voice in my head that's telling me how bad things are going to be. I'm going to let it do its talking. And then in, in some measure, you feel like you have control over that. But because trading is such a mind game, it's it's 90% emotion, 10% technical analysis. When you know about you, you've, uh, you, you've started to master trading. That is, uh, uh, that's my rant for, <laughs> for the afternoon. I hope you all have a good day.